Well, all right, all right, all right, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Planet Gen X podcast. I'm Sean, that over there is Brian, and by God, we're so happy to see you guys today. We've got a interesting little uh, something, little news, little news on some 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 movies, maybe. Yeah, a little and, uh, little surprise we got because yeah. uh, I honestly didn't think this one was going to happen, but. Before we get into that, guys, please remember to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the dislike button, leave us a comment. We just need some action. Give us some action. Thanking you. Thanking you very much. All righty. Well, yeah. So I hear a couple days ago, I think it was on the radio or something like that. They were talking about it, man. The Matrix 5 is going to be a thing. It is well, official, man. The Variety had an article about it. And, uh, Needless to say, for those who don't remember the last Matrix movie, it did not do very well. Matrix well, Resurrections. I think there was like a clear line, right? Like the first one, obviously everybody but you liked, right? <laughs> yes, we'll get into that. Yep. Uh, the second one, uh, you know, was not as well received, but still pretty well received. Yeah. The third one, a lot of people were angry about. And then the fourth one flopped, kind of. Yeah, flops big time. However, it did have this weird thing we were going through, you know, uh, where we were <clears throat> getting HBO Max and they were putting out movies that were meant to go into theaters. Some some went into theaters at the same time as coming on Max. Some went to Max first and then went to theaters. And this was one of those. I believe it went to Max first, then to theaters. And it just didn't do that well. I mean, you know, I watched it, but a lot of people just didn't like it. It didn't now, do correct, well. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm I'm looking at our show notes here, and obviously, uh, the it's it's not quite a Wachowski production, right? It is, but it's not. It's just Lana. Yeah. Uh, I I want to say the last one was just Lana as well, or if not. Maybe Lily was not equally as involved. No, like Lily wasn't involved. And before, well, yeah, Lily wasn't involved. And Lana directed the uh, last one yeah. and produced it. Yeah. This one, however, she is not. She, she will be an EP, EP? on. Yeah. yeah. And Lily is not involved at all. And I don't think was involved at all in the fourth movie either. I think so. So, so I'm just kind of like, that's my mind frame because you, you take these ge geniuses that work well together and pull them mm -hmm. apart. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's definitely an element missing and it's probably because you're missing one of the Warshawski sisters, I guess yeah. you should say it now, but, and which, which is what I was about to say. I, I knew one of them converted. I didn't know the other one did. So like when I was doing this, I said, Lily, I'm like, what the fuck? I, I didn't even know that man. Talk about doing everything together. Right. Jesus. No, uh, well, I mean, I, I do remember the tale of them both transitioning, but obviously I, I don't think Lily got as much attention after the not. third one, right? Yeah, obviously one is gung-ho to be working and the other is not, I guess, is what I'm getting right. from it. <laughs> At least with the Matrix franchise. Anyway, well, that's I what I was going to say. Maybe it's just one of them's tired of... Thomas Anderson and his crew and yeah wants to do something else. The other one's like holding on. <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, I mean, you know, if it's if it's making you money, because I don't know what you know their lifestyle is like, but they may need the money. Hell. And so, you know, saying all that to say that nobody was expecting this movie. Right. You know, I mean, it's like, well, what the fuck? That came out of nowhere. But um apparently the this guy so we said that, you know, uh, Lana's not directing it. So the guy directing it is um, Drew Goddard. Right. And he is known for things such as The Martian. I believe he was Oscar nominated in that film or for that film. Sorry. And um, alongside one of my favorites, Ridley. Yes, definitely. Uh, he did another movie called Bad Times at the El Royale. I, I don't, I've never even heard of that. Uh, I but, saw that and you should watch it. I actually liked it. There were a lot of really interesting roles in that. Yeah. Uh, John Hamm plays a one of like his him. more interesting, not so good, but not so bad guys. 
But one of the Hemsworths does an amazing character that you're going to have to just watch to see. Well, I'll have to check that out. But um, he did uh, Cloverfield and World War Z. Yep. And one of my favorite films that I, I'm absolutely certain is going to be a uh, cult classic, if not it already. Is. It's a cult already a cult classic. Okay. I don't know how you haven't heard this. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I have heard that. It might be why I said it, but the uh, the cabin in the woods. I mean, yeah. just fantastic fucking movie. I have I've I had a few friends that were like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" I'm like, "Dude, if you don't if you don't get it, you just don't get it." There's no way I could explain it to you uh, why that movie is so good. Um, if you don't appreciate it, I am sorry, but it's a damn good movie, uh, especially for a horror movie. And that's you know that's the whole point of it. All right. It's like. And I mean, it was, it was such a great take on it too, right? It, it was, really it was, was meta man. at the time when meta was like a big deal. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, it was well done, well done. And, and speaking of Hemsworths, right? There was there was a Hemsworth in there. Yes, there was one of them. Um, so, according to Variety, the plot details haven't been revealed, but Warner Brothers motion picture of production Jesse Ehrman teases that the story will advance the fantasy world without straying too far from what made the series a success. Right. Um, Drew came to Warner Brothers with a new idea that we all believe would be an incredible way to continue the Matrix world. By both honoring what Lana and Lily began over 25 years ago and offering a unique perspective based on his own love of the series and characters, Airman said in a statement... <laughs> Sometimes I'll read like a fucking fifth grader, dude. Uh, <laughs> just didn't read it far enough ahead. The entire team at Warner Brothers Discovery is thrilled for Drew to be making this new Matrix film, adding his vision to the cinematic canon the Wachowskis spent a quarter of a century building here at the studio. Right. And, of course, it says Goddard was nominated for an Oscar for writing The Martian, which, you know, was a Ridley Scott. I'm sorry. Damn. Again, I'm reading, reading wrong. Yeah, it was directed by Ridley Scott, starring Matt Damon. I never saw that film either. Was it good? I mean, it, it got nominated for an Oscar for a reason. It's not the kind of movie I would normally watch, but it yeah. was also released in a kind of a dry time. Right. I remember. I remember when it came out. Yeah. So, so you know, you brought up, like, everybody liked The Matrix 1, but me. It was just such a, you know, weird affair, that whole thing, because... You guys were all watching it. You know, we have so, like, we were at this, we had this, um, I don't know what you call the ball and claw. It wasn't a comic shop. It was like a gaming shop. Internet like, cafe. Internet cafe, yeah. And uh, it had, like, six six computers in the back wired up. And this was, like, DSL had just come out. Right. And this was one of the first locations that had it. So we'd sell time they on computers. They were Pentiums, right? It was after the first Pentiums? It was, they were, they had to be Pentium 2s because I remember yeah. they were cartridges. And he had yeah. two, um uh, voodoo twos in them right and uh, they were 450s as a matter of fact early sli on one of them right yeah yeah we were at, they were all sli'd uh, oh, really? well no one of them was one just one of. you're right yeah it was yeah. just uh, the main one that he would sit on but uh so we'd have guys come in you know we were the early adopters of multiplayer games before it was really a thing you know to get together with your friends and we used to hang out with one of the guys that is in a few movies these days. Yeah. There. Yeah, John. Um, yeah. John's been in a few Mr. movies. An Speaking of Mr. Anderson. Mr. <laughs> Anderson. Yeah, John Anderson is uh, most famously known for being, what do they call the Ravengers? Yeah, I think that's what they're called. He is uh, one of the Ravengers from... Um, Ravager, I think. Ravagers Guardians. from um, Guardians of Galaxy 2. And uh, he's uh, distinct in that because he's one of the few of the guys that got asked back to do Comic-Con. So he's actually done the makeup twice, and only a handful of those guys did. Uh, you've seen him in a lot of other TV shows and whatnot, but he, he's all over the convention scene, I'm sure. I mean, he plays extras in a lot of stuff, but to yeah. be honest, I think his favorite work is like character work, like when he gets to be something monstrous or oh or something yeah like that no doubt that would be my thing too man i told him i was so jealous that he got to do that it was ridiculous because Full if you makeup. recall i, I th think when he first got the buck for this we were there uh, yeah i reminded minutes. him of that yeah he didn't even uh, remember it yeah i had to remind him of that when uh when i found him on facebook after i found out 
that he was in that. I don't even know how I found out that he was in that movie or whatnot, or that he was doing that. But, um, yeah, I was like, Anyway, the telling him, yeah, I'm cafe. sorry. I love, the dog's down here driving me crazy. So he <laughs> he said, uh, "I was like, dude, I you know you remember, uh, oh Jesus, Jay's wife painting you up just like Darth Maul." And the dude, she did a fantastic job. He Amazing. borrowed my my little play lightsaber. I had Darth Maul's lightsaber that had just come out from uh, the Hasbro, and uh, he had that thing. And she, I swear to God, he looked just like fucking Ray Park. It was crazy. So they got like with the radio guys down there and had him, you know, on the radio and stuff. And uh, it was a big deal. But, yeah, I, I pointed exactly back to that time that that had to be a turning point for him or something that just got him. in. It was like, damn, that was fun. Yeah, I feel like. And I mean, that I think that was the same time it happened for her as well. Yeah, um, because ever since then, every Halloween, she goes over the top. Oh, yeah. Top cosplayer, man, like doing cosplay before cosplay was cool, way before it was cool. So, um, yeah, that's that. Then, so every oh, yeah, I was going, <laughs> we get so excited. So, I was telling you, so everybody's watching on these that we get the matrix early somehow through the magic of the internet piracy so and, and yeah. pirate bay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, these guys had it earlier and we're watching it and I'd hear it for like Jesus, two weeks, I heard it over and over and over and over again. And I never would watch the thing, but I had heard the movie hundreds of times. Yeah. And I just refused. Like, everybody had burnt me out on it so bad. Like, I just absolutely refused to watch the damn movie. And it wasn't until the third movie finally came out and, I, you know, it came out on DVD or whatever. And uh, I finally watched them. And... It's it's all right. I mean, it's good. It's good stuff. It's not bad, but uh, you know, it was just a lot of a lot of fanfare around going on, and I just remember what a big deal was, and I just couldn't be bothered at the time. <laughs> I know for me, it was a lot different than a lot of other people because I I remember in high school getting into a lot of like John Sarté, Thomas Paine, a bunch of like philosophers and whatnot and so like before they came out and were like you know this was all the stuff we had to read and you know all the remarks on it was more of like a philosopher uh, a philosopher's look on a bunch of things uh those things would stick out to people who who read up on that stuff and so that's that's what really stuck out for me but um yeah. <clears throat> A lot of it was really just the CG in it, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was, you know, it was one of those that was pushing pushing the envelope. I remember, like, most people used blue screen up until they came around, and then it was green screen everywhere. Right. Like, everybody's like, and oh, the green also, screen. You know, uh, Larry is one of his more interesting roles, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. Probably my favorite role of his that I could think of. Um, nothing springs to mind. Well, I mean, uh, oh, uh, that space movie, Ben Horizon. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that was a good movie. That's a good movie. Yeah, yeah, that's a it's wild crazy. movie. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt, definitely a wild movie. Yeah. So, um, I guess that's it for the Matrix right now, right? Yeah, that's about all we know, man. There's not a lot of details, so. Uh, not a lot of other movie news other than the fact um, I, I had seen uh, over, over the past couple of days, apparently Dune 3 has been approved. Uh, I have not watched the second one yet. Yeah. Um, so I need to watch it. Maybe a spoiler. We may be seeing Jason Momoa in the third one. Um, okay. If you read the books, you know why. <laughs> well, I'm... I'm trying to okay, so they're just going past the sec the first book then with the third movie. Is that I what would they're guess. doing? Uh, yeah, that, that's what it seems to line up is like one you know, they've they've kind of done this before. They've kind of split up that first story. Um, yeah, The Hobbit is a good example. Remember, it was supposed to be two movies. Right. Yeah. And um, it, it ended but up being no, three. I'm I'm actually talking about Dune itself. You know, they, they did a two uh series, right? 
Well, I know that that uh, Sci-Fi did their series, and I, I hated. I think they did two. I'm not. Did I'm they not do two of them? Holy shit. Yeah, I hated their series. <laughs> Absolutely hated it. They, it's like they went out of their way to pronounce everything different than right. uh, than uh, Lynch's version. And it's just like annoyed the shit out of me. Really did. It's like, let's do it any way different except how David Lynch did it. And right. that's why I love this new one so much, man, because it it really pays homage to the original very well it does uh but one thing that i will bring up that uh i i read the books you obviously didn't um no i've when... read the first book i didn't read the oh, did? the others yeah okay well then you know in the newer version of dune in the first one they touch on things that they didn't do in the first right the ornithopter yeah right obviously i guess that was supposed to be an ornithopter in the original it one, was but that's it not was. how it was described right in the yeah book, right? that always bugged me yeah, that, that really has. I don't uh, even know that uh, the sci-fi movie got it right either. I don't. Right. I don't think they did. Uh, the hand signals. Uh, yeah, were not really present in the right. original. Yeah. Um, and, and just minor things like that that they they really did well. I think. Yeah. No, I um, agree. I, I also want to say that finding the Harkonnen was in the book too. When the one that was piloting the Hunter Seeker. I think they said they found him like a, in a hidden alcove or something. It, it's possible. I think you're right. It, it's just been so long since I read, yeah. read that book, man. Same. But I mean, like, obviously, you know, I think both are, are a good mix. And I was looking today, I was kind of uh, weirded out to see what happened to uh, some of the names that I really didn't follow up on personally afterwards. Uh, the daughter of the emperor. Yeah. Um, beautiful lady, right? Mm -hmm. Next time I remember seeing her was freaking monk. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Like it was like that in the first movie too. Yeah. Like she's there. She's the net. Well, that she wouldn't have had a part at all. If she wasn't a very beginning narrator, you know, and you barely see her. And that's one thing I didn't get. Like I, I watched the old one here. Not that long. Like yesterday, actually. Yeah. I can never get that intro. Like a lot of it makes sense. A lot of it was like, wow, that's, that's a really cool idea. But in the intro, <clears throat> they do a close up on her face, pull out their space, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but you know, she's sitting there talking and then randomly at some part, her face just kind of fades away and you see the star field. Right. And then it comes back and she continues talking and then it does it again. Yeah. Right? It, 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 and I'm like, that was the perfect time to do that. You could have broken up the cadence more and that would have been perfect. Yeah. Well, see, I don't even like watching that version anymore. Like I'm so about the, the extended version um, because it's just, it connects better. It's it, it, you can follow the story better. Dude, the, I, I had to watch that first movie so many times before I understood <laughs> what the fuck was going on. Yeah. You know, and with the extended version alleviates a lot of that because they've got all that stuff at the beginning that really kind of explains what's going on. And uh, it's the only way I can watch it anymore. Plus, I just like the fact that it's longer. You know, it's a really good movie. It is a really good movie. I, I agree with that. Like so much from that, you you would go back and watch it now if you've never seen it, and you will laugh. I'm sure. But at the time, that was so mm. wild, right? I don't know, man. I it still stands up really well. I don't know that they could laugh. There's some shit today nowadays I laugh at, man. The CG nowadays is way worse than it was 15 fucking years ago. Some of it is, yeah. It looks horrible. It's but no, just I just like, wanted to mention that apparently they are doing a third Dune, and I'm guessing it's going to be outside of the first book. Yeah, that would be cool. Now okay. that I can get behind because I've been wanting, you know, the estates. They've been putting out books. Uh, is his son or uh, another family yeah, member his son, or some? Uh, yeah. Brian, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I said that. I knew that. Um, but yeah, I've been wanting to see that kind of stuff for a while, man. It, it's, yeah, um, it's well. And needed. honestly, I was kind of upset that we didn't get to see what happens after this. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it for anybody, but. It's a big deal what happens after this. It's crazy. It's out there. And that's probably why it didn't happen, because Hollywood probably did not have the vision at that time. for Yeah. It. 
Well, um, now's the time you can make shit like that. I mean, it's just yeah. like the same thing Lucas said fucking back, you know, in the late nineties when he said, I think it's finally technology is finally here where I can do what I want to do. Yeah. And it's the same for the movies. Like, you know, realizing visions like, um, Oh shit. Dude, it was on the tip of my brain. It's, it was a TV, uh, series on Netflix. The, the cyber cyberpunk thing. It- it was the cyberpunk the um, it was the live action cyberpunk oh the um one with the dude from the new uh robocop they had the discs in the head i can't fucking think of the name of it i'm getting there give me a sec yeah i wonder why i'm drawing a blank man it's like that and black mirror the head got me um Fuck, what was the name of that show? Leave it in the comments because we can't keep yeah, sitting please. here all day, man. I am drawing a complete fucking blank. Same. But that, like, that was like made for a TV as a TV show, and it was just phenomenal. It had the looks of it. You want to talk about well done effects? They did it well done, and you couldn't have done what they did to realize that vision. You know, thirty years ago, it wouldn't have looked right. that good. And just wouldn't some so they had some good stuff back in the day like you know judge dread kind of got in that area um uh, fifth element got in that area but yeah i think now now's the time to see the dune stuff realized i could see that and as you go further on in the books i i don't know that brian's books would be picked up necessarily uh, but some of the the earlier stuff that Frank did would probably yeah huh. he wrote three books right Frank I think so, yeah yeah and I don't Brian's come out with quite a few hadn't he I wanted to say he did three as well I, I don't I think Just he three. continued it for a while but it, it's if I, if I recall I I really didn't keep up but he stopped after a while yeah has anybody written it have the, have the, has the family let anybody write anything I doubt it. Yeah. Uh, you know, that was that was his son. So I'll, obviously, you know, yeah, he had a, a little more leeway. Yeah. And most people will accept that, too. Sons are OK. I mean, like. I even let Bram Stoker's what is it his nephew or whatever, I even give him a I'll throw him a bone just because he's family still. You know, I mean, he's the only one that seemed to show interest in doing it. So. Yeah. You know, what I'm talking about like continuing the Dracula stuff. Yeah. I'm just looking at something here, and I, I think I misspoke now that I'm looking at it. Oh, no. I you guess get... I did read some of more of Brian's work than I thought, because it looks like Frank just did the first one. I could have sworn. I thought he did more than one book, but. Yeah, I, well, I mean, God Emperor was the next one. No, yeah, I'm sure. Is, yeah, I'm okay. sure he did more than one book. And Messiah. Yeah. So that that first those first three were definitely him. Okay. Right. I yeah. was just worried because I, I saw this Brian stuff and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> and he did Brian just have three, like you said, or did he have more? Uh, I want to say he's like had he more had than more, three. So uh, yeah, I want to say he's had like five or something like that. You know, I used to be kind of remember when I had my Dune thing going on. Like there was a there was a hot minute there where I was like obsessed with Dune. Yeah. Going around saying shy hello. Yeah. I want to say there's like 10 or so. It looks like he's been uh, co-writing with Kevin Anderson hmm. as well. Not bad. Yeah. That can't be bad. So, yeah, I think there's there's quite a few books now. So, like, they could really exploit this like Harry Potter has been doing with all their stuff and have a good run of movies. Oh, they're doing prequels. Okay some of these books okay but yeah i think i knew i knew he did one prequel yeah cool yeah anyway so yesterday was thursday and epic games we've talked about before has their free games that come out every week and one of they actually gave us two this time which they do uh in at the christmas year a lot and, you know, pr- sporadically throughout the year, they'll do it as well. But one of the games was The Outer Worlds. And which, speaking of Christmas, I know I'm about, that's why I was going to bring this up. This was important because 
you missed this one. I already got it. Yeah, it came yeah. out at Christmas time and I grabbed it then. And I was really hoping you would grab it because I still haven't even played it because I wanted you. I don't know why just to be playing it at the same time. Just I guess so yeah. we could just sh fucking shoot the shit about Talk it. About it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Nerd out. <laughs> Yeah, so I was like, I got to make sure Brian sees that. I was like, wait a minute, I need to talk about this on the podcast because I saw the other game that was out for free, and I couldn't believe it because I was like, holy shit, I did not know they remade this game. So the other game is Thief, and if, for those that don't know, Thief is a remake, and this one came out in like 23. It's not that old, and Thief was a very well-done game back in late 90s, early 2000s. It was either yeah, 99 or 2000 playing it. Yes. He played the uh, shit out of it. And you can, you can go back now. You'll, you'll notice, notice like all the polygons and stuff, but back then. Yeah. We done. thought it was cool as fuck. I yeah. mean, like <laughs> it, it was the best we could get at the time. So, you know, uh, it's welcome to see somebody redoing it. I can't wait to check this game out. Yeah. Um, I couldn't grab it fast enough. And now I'm torn because you now have the outer worlds. And uh, I just can't wait to do both. They they're they're going to vie for my attention this week for sure. Yeah. Well, um, actually, I'm trying to look it up here now, but I can't see it. The um, the version of Outer Worlds, Spacer's Choice. That's yeah. what it's called. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Spacer's Choice Edition, which is basically a bunch of DLC, some updated yeah. graphics, like it's a whole new thing. So. Um, I'm glad they did that. Yeah, personally. it's the whole shooting match, man. They were very generous. I was surprised to see this one come up again. I, they had teased it a couple weeks back, and then it didn't show up. And I was like, well, what happened there? Because usually okay. it's, they just tease it the week before. Okay. Like right now, uh, what is it? Ghost Runners is the tease. And I have that one, too, already. So if you yeah, didn't I mean, get I've it. I've seen that run through the Epic Game Store numerous times already. Yeah, and I figured it just came out because they just had a sequel come out. So. It's funny because it doesn't seem like it was all that long ago when it came out, like maybe two months ago, because yeah. the sequel just came out a couple months ago. But anyway, here it is coming up again soon. So y'all check these out because these games, that's three. Well, that probably won't be in a row, but they, they do put out some really nice titles throughout the year. Yeah. No doubt about it. Like I would say that, and I've only, I think I've only bought like one or two games in from Epic. Everything else is free. I would say at least half of my library is really good shit. At least. I don't know about yours because you may have. Yeah, I've only been an Epic dude for like the last. I don't know what what did I say when the Friday the Thirteenth game I had Steam that came out. That's the first time I ever got on online stuff, and Epic came a little later. I mean, so I guess that's been about a year, right? You've only been using it for a year? No, like, oh. it wasn't it about a year? I, I thought it was like when we started doing this that, that you had done that. I guess, it, well, no, yeah, yeah. now that you mention it, uh, yeah, so it'd been over a year because we started this right at January, like literally the first week of January. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so it'd be over a year for me. Um, I, I know I had Epic for other things because it, it was an old account. I had to dig around, you know, get the new pat get a new password and all that shit yeah. so you know some i'd had before but never really did anything didn't know he gave free games and all that shit i don't know how it must have been jay texting me that one day and saying hey this game's out you need to go grab it and i did and then ever since then i'm like damn they're putting out some fine shit i need to Probably spread the was. word yeah so there I don't it is know. I, my my library it's really hit or miss um i've got a bunch of like bad games yeah oh no <laughs> i did too free yeah because i was broke and bored right. right well i dude i grab just about everything there's there's maybe once in a blue moon i won't i'm just like nah, i'll never play that but i started thinking the main reason i do that is because i think about well maybe my wife would like this and if ever we're just in a pinch for, you know, if she wants something to play or whatever, I'm be like, here, I got a whole library of shit. You want to go through and just see if you want something to do, you know, or whatever. But, um, and like you say, it's free. It's not, it's not staying on a hard drive. I don't have to keep, keep up with it. So why not? Yeah. Why not? 
So go check uh, it out. Continuing they... on the, the game tip, I will say I have played a little bit more of Last Epoch. Yeah. Um, and my my final take on it, I haven't quite gotten the character up to 100, which I think is okay. the max level. All right. uh, they haven't completed all the levels, I don't think. I don't know that for sure, but I don't yeah, think Yeah, I they think have. they're still in early access. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but um, as far as the look and feel of it, is great i love it um it's a lot like path of exile uh so far as like the stuff you get the things you do all that's pretty much the same yeah. although it feels a lot cleaner it's a lot more simplified uh on path of exile you've got like this huge skill skill wheel where you can go like all these nodes or everything this one's more like here you can pick these five skills out of whatever class you are and Spe specialize on these trees or whatever yeah. it's in depth enough to keep you engaged and want you to make make you want to make builds but it's not like as dumbfounding as path of exile is right you know it, it seemed like a very capable game uh certainly somebody who just wants to play like a diablo or baldur's gate type game uh, and you don't want to play diablo or baldur's gate well, that's the other thing. It it feels a lot more like it's kind of Path of Exile in that way, but it's also kind of Hades, or I think it was Legend of the Lost Tomb, something like that, one of those games, yeah. um, where you, uh, you do these kind of dungeon runs and you get these buffs afterwards, and I don't know. It's, it's kind of hard for me to describe, but uh, basically the, the controls are a lot smoother than you would have, obviously, in the, the original Baldur's Gate, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so it's it's definitely one of those that I, I feel you do better with a controller as opposed to a keyboard and mouse. Cool. Yeah, sometimes I just, some games just feel better with a controller to me. This is one yeah. of those for me. So I guess that's it on the games. Uh, I only have one other thing to add. Uh, this is the 30th anniversary of uh, Kurt Cobain. Wow. Doing the deed. Um, 30 years. 30 years, man. Makes me feel old. He was kind of the voice of our generation. <laughs> yeah. That's um, true, man. I remember exactly where I was. You know, that's what they say. Do you remember where you were when this happened? I do remember exactly where I was when I heard the news about this. Yeah, I was in I was in school because uh, oh, yeah. interestingly, the teacher that told me was one of my favorite teachers. He had long hair and shit. And I spent most of my whole day with him pretty much uh, my junior and senior year. And of course, it was my senior year. And he had already come to us <clears throat> about two months prior to that and saying, your old boy almost lost his uh, almost died or whatever. I don't remember how he put it, but he said it something to that effect. I was like, hey, what are you talking about? He said, oh, Kurt Cobain, he's in the hospital. He, I think they, I think he said he tried to commit suicide. Right. And uh, I was like, damn, man. And he was unsuccessful then. But it wasn't like two, three months later that he comes to me. Exact same, you know, he he, he got it done this time. Yeah, damn. I think it was uh, OD the first time. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. But I don't know how many people remember that. But I remember like it was a, it was a close call already. So it was like. You know, you could see the writing on the wall, man. Yeah. You really could. Well, I mean, he was he was in a dark place, obviously. And OD, ODs are one of those that, you know, you can look at it either way. Like, they, it's a mistake or, right. you know, they failed. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. In his case, it was probably a fail. Right. Yeah. Obviously. But, uh, wow, that's because, wild. Like, you know, he should have been on top of the world, right? And that's should've kind been. of like the reason I call him the voice of our generation is like, no matter how great you have things, if you were of our generation, it seems like, you know, life sucks. <laughs> right. I guess. Yeah. And he, for him, it is like the fame was unwanted. Yeah. You know, and here, here's a guy who's, you know, in a, a junk band and somehow makes it big, man. And, it was just too much for him. And I don't know that, you know, I mean, like there was heavy drug use and Courtney was off her rocker at the time. I don't know if she's any different now, but, uh, 
yeah, she was well out of it as, as much as he was. So all that plays a factor in it, man, especially, and they were living in Seattle too, where it's fucking miserable. I don't know if any right. of you have ever been to Seattle, but it is fucking miserable up there. And they have a very high, um, suicide rate. heroin. You, yeah. It was suicide rate. And the heroin use is ridiculous up there because right. everybody's so fucking down in the dumps, man. And of course, it's a vicious cycle, right? You you start the heroin, you're down in the dumps. The heroin gets you down in the dumps, and it's like blah, 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 blah. it's always fucking gloomy and rainy there. I mean, just they never see the sun, bro. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it was a bad situation all around. the The odds were against them, that's for sure. No doubt. Definitely missed. Yeah, you know, um, I have no n issue with Nirvana, but I just don't care to listen to it anymore. You know, I really don't much either, but that's, it's also one of those things where I'm not going to go out of my way to listen to a Nirvana song, Exactly. but if I hear a Nirvana song, I'm not going to change the channel. Right. right. Yeah. That's pretty much how I am with it. I mean, cause dude, like even smells like teen spirit as, as, as played out as that is. And I, I have like, played it out on the verge all the time of like, never again. Am I listening to that song? Yeah. I'll still listen to it. Oh right? yeah. Dude, and you want to talk about played out like when the the band I had in school at the time, like we literally knew two songs and that was one of them. The other was Inner Sandman. Right. And like that was the two biggest songs at the time. And uh, yeah, we played the fuck out of it. It was one of the few songs I actually sang, which was very difficult because we didn't have any money for right equipment. So I'm like leaning over and playing like this. Yeah, it was it was brutal. <laughs> right. Drummer singing is rough. I actually uh, knew another guy that was a drummer and sang on one or two of his tracks of his band. Same thing, you know. He, he had the mic like way up, and he had to like move around to to get his voice out of the uh, percussions range. Yeah. Right? So tough times, dude. Yeah. Different world back then. Yeah. Good times for sure. Well, bro, you got anything else for us? I think that's all I got today. Well, cool, man. Brian brought it with the damn content today because I didn't have shit. Appreciate it. Well, we spent a lot of time on what you had. Yeah. With, there was, that was fertile. Yeah, it was, there. man. It's definitely going to be something to keep an eye out on. So, guys, before we go, um, Star Trek Discovery is out. It has started this week. So, we are going to start our uh, React series to that. And uh, we're going to do it a little bit different than we have before. So you'll see that in a couple days, two or three days when I get it out there and when we actually watch it, because Brian and I have had no time to watch it. I dropped the ball on that one, but we'll recover. You guys will get a video and hopefully you'll like it. Yep, yep, yep. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And remember, as always, be excellent to each other. And Brian and I will see you on the flip side. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Peace out now.